He's a Cub fan and a CUNA man. Please welcome President and CEO of CUNA, Mr. Jim Nussel. Good morning and welcome to America's Credit Union Conference. It's my first chance to be able to say that to many of you. I've had a chance to visit with so many of you in the exhibit hall and uh, over the last day, and I'm just excited to have you here in, in Boston. What a great city and what a great kickoff. Uh, yesterday, Gigi Hyland did such a fantastic job of connecting uh, financial health, uh, health and wellness uh, together with uh, what we do for people every single day and then Chef Jeff, my goodness, I, I don't know about you, but I, it was hard to get to sleep last night just thinking about all the lives he's touched and how many lives we can touch as a result of his inspirational message. So welcome uh, to, uh, to the conference. And I want to uh, welcome, there are many people that are watching online. We're streaming live today uh, across the country to uh, many different credit union leaders who couldn't make it here today. So welcome uh, to those that are online. I've got an idea that I think can move. And that is that every single day across America, people walk into a credit union, they access one of us in order to help their dreams come true. And what's amazing about that idea is that we're with them at some of the most important and intimate moments of their lives. And those dreams can be gigantic dreams. They can be, you know, owning your first home or uh, getting a new car or sending somebody to college maybe for the first time in a, in a, in a family's, uh, first one in a generation maybe to go to college or something like that. But the, the dreams may be as intimate as what Gigi described yesterday. Moving from paycheck to paycheck to maybe being able to save a paycheck. Uh, getting out of debt, getting out of credit card debt, uh, being able to, instead of go to a bus stop, be able to park your car in a parking lot when you're going to work. Those are things that a lot of folks across the country struggle with every day, and credit unions are right there when it matters the most, helping whatever that dream might be. It could be as big as creating a hobby into a business, or it could be as what might seem somewhat small of just getting out of debt for one week. But whatever it is, credit unions do that for people. And that's why credit unions are so important to our future and why what we do here today and what we do every day and what we plan to do in the future is so key uh, to our existence and more importantly to the financial health and well-being of the members that we serve. But credit unions are under stress. Under, under challenge. We all know that. I mean, as I travel around the country and I have the opportunity to visit with credit union leaders, they tell me all the time about different issues that are stressing them. It could be things that happen inside the credit union, like the need for talent or to develop the people that are working on the front lines of, of credit union uh, services for members. Uh, it could be data security or just compliance, 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 all of the paperwork and rules and regulations just to keep the doors open uh, and just to maintain that safety and soundness that, that our members not only deserve but we've all come to expect. Or the challenges that come in from outside the credit union. The, regulatory environment that continues to just seem to, even though we've made some progress, we know that it's making it difficult, particularly for a lot of our smaller credit unions, to even exist. Or the frivolous lawsuits that are happening now across the country where ambulance chasing trial lawyers are out there not working for people with disabilities, but trying to line their own pocket using and preying on people with challenges in order to basically go through some kind of extortion of our institutions. Or our tax status may be under stress. We just saw that this last year in Iowa, as an example. Or at the national level during tax reform. We know that our model is under question. Even though we have a proud tradition, every day we have to make sure that we are maintaining that and re-energizing it for the future. And last but not least, it's about the future, right? It's about, are we going to be relevant? five, 10, 20 years from now, maybe even next year. There are many good industries 
and really good companies that maybe took that for granted. Chef Jeff talked about Sears, right? I mean, who would have thought Sears would ever go away, let alone Xerox and Toys R Us and all sorts of famous and important and kind of hallmark companies that are no longer there because maybe they didn't look into the future and say, how can we own our own future? What can we do to make sure that our customers and our, and our members or our, our marketplace understands our value far into the future? So for me at least, I really believe that we need to have a plan in order to address those issues and go into the future boldly owning every single facet that we possibly can. And that's why the CUNA board came together and they said, let's devise a plan for each one of those areas. Let's make sure that we're doing everything we can in order to own that future. And they wanted us, as you do, for CUNA to be the place where we can bring all of that together and where we can kind of own the opportunity to make that difference. And I really think as a result, not only is CUNA on a mission uh, for, for credit unions and for our credit union future, but as a result, we get to be the champion for credit unions and the credit union future. And we've got superpowers. You know, I call them cooperative or credit union superpowers that really can work to our own advantage. You know, when you think about it, we're not alone. Credit unions don't have to do this alone. There's not one person in this audience that can't look to the person next to you and say, you know what, I need to lean on you for a little bit of help if we're gonna get this done, if we're gonna own our future. And it's amazing if you, if you look at the strength that we have together, if you put it all together, whether it's the, the many credit unions, 70,000 board members, the 300,000 professionals that work in our credit unions, or the big number up there, 110 million members across the country who walk into a credit union to help make sure their dreams come true. Our partners that we have in the exhibit hall and so many others that are willing to help ensure that our future is bright. To me, those are superpowers. Ways that we can make people helping people come alive, not only for the folks that we serve, but to ensure that that future is bright. And we can build on that reputation that we have that has been nurtured all, all through those many years. So the CUNA board, together with all of us, we came up with a plan. We said we've got to deliver the best-in-class solutions for our credit unions so that they can own that future. We want the best 360-degree advocacy that we possibly can in order to ensure that our operating environment is revolutionized to serve new generations of Americans. And maybe even most important, if we're going to own our future, is we've got to create better awareness about the credit union difference for generations to come in America. And so based on that, CUNA came up with a plan in order to amass those superpowers and focus our attention on what matters to ensure that that happens. And I just want to kind of go through a few of those and let you know how we're doing. First of all, on solutions, whether it's in the compliance community that now has over 4,500 of your professional compliance folks that come together in one place in order to talk about compliance, to solve problems, to get best-in-class solutions, or downloading over 45,000 files every single month in order to just make sure we're up to date is a great way for that to happen. Talent development. So many of you are members of maybe it's the, maybe it's the marketing council or another one of our CUNA councils or the CEO council where you can come together and not only work on your own development, but find out how others are doing it. And that peer-to-peer -peer networking that is so important uh, to help ensure that our folks are, are, uh, are, are, are finding it uh, vital to be part of not only the credit union movement, but to find out how they can best serve their members in your own credit union. And last but not least, we're investing in the future. Just this last year as an example, instead of waiting for the banks to come up with a solution or somebody else, we invested in the technology for blockchain to come up with something called CU Ledger, of distributed ledger that we can invest in. It's a credit union solution, not a bank solution or somebody else's ownership, but our ownership. So these are ways that we can solve problems together. That's the first pillar. The second one is in advocacy. And I gotta tell you, we've had a, we've had a busy year. The 360 degree advocacy plan that CUNA does together with all of our leagues and all of you as credit unions and credit union professionals has had an amazing cooperative superpower year. 
If you think about all that we've done together, putting all of our dues toward advocacy, amassing all of the professionals, now over, I think, about 150 different professional government affairs folks across the country, the many credit unions that come to the GAC, we had over 5,000 folks come to the GAC this year, and as a result, delivered an amazing message to Congress, and even for the first time, went down to the White House to take our regulatory burden message and our common sense regulatory reform message to the President of the United States and to this cabinet. What an amazing year we had, and we had success, too. If you look across the country, leagues and CUNA and CUNA and leagues and credit unions all working together, we defeated an attack from the banks in Iowa trying to tax credit unions for the very first time. We defended credit unions from the frivolous lawsuits of the ADA website uh, demand letters. We, we sent now a letter from 100 members of Congress to the Justice Department saying you've got to fix this because of the extortion that's going on out in the marketplace with regard to those websites. We were able to get money back from the Corporate Stabilization Fund after closing it. We pushed the CFPB to put a moratorium on, on regulations. And we preserved the credit union tax status at a time where I'm not sure anyone would have believed that it was possible not just to preserve it, but as a result of your efforts, there wasn't even one amendment that was put forward by any member of Congress or senator to tax a credit. It's pretty amazing if you think about it. They didn't even make a proposal, the banks or anyone, to tax credit unions as a result of a long-term advocacy strategy that you and we have all put together. But the big coup de grace this year was 2155. An amazing opportunity. I mean, think about it. This is the United States Congress. They can't even agree on the color of the sky. And Democrats and Republicans came together, the House and the Senate came together and they said, you know what, it's time to reduce the regulatory burden for consumers in America and for credit unions in particular and so many of our institutions that are delivering quality services for our consumers. The one to four residential MBL relief, the escrow exemptions, Humda exemptions, we, I think we had a really good start. We have more we need to do. But if you don't start somewhere, you're never going to get to your destination. And because of your effort, we were able to have that kind of success this year. And what did you do? 2,000 meetings, 2,000 individual meetings with policymakers, over 200,000 visits, individual visits to our campaign website in order to begin that, that, that effort to communicate our common sense regulatory relief. We sent 56 thousand messages. We, that's you, sent 56,000 messages just to the Senate during S2155 and over a hundred million digital impressions. Pretty amazing what we were able to do when we pulled together all of our superpowers as credit unions and working together, people helping people. But the result of it, as Mark said during my introduction, is that it's increased our reputation. This is the game changer. It's not just the first thing you do, it's working to build that momentum for the next five things you want to do. And as a result of that, our influence, your influence, our influence as credit unions has increased as we go to talk to our members of Congress and senators or to the White House. And that's the game changer that we need to use to our advantage. So solutions to solve some of those challenges inside our credit union Advocacy, because we've got to be at the tip of the spear when we're talking to those policymakers. Those are two important pillars. But today, what I really am excited to talk to you about is the future. We need to own it. And today, we have an opportunity to kickstart something that I'm really excited about, using those cooperative superpowers, all right? Nobody's going to do this alone. We're going to do this together. And that's creating better awareness for consumers about the credit union difference. Here's, here's the thing. We want to be able to tell our story better than ever before. We want, to, we want to communicate to people why we're different and, more importantly, why we're exceptional, right? And we want to ensure that, that everybody not just has heard of a credit union, which we know can be challenging, but we want, to, we want them to know that we're, we're better. 
and why they should do business with us, why they should become a member, why should, why should they even walk in our front door to help them with the dreams that we know they can, they can accomplish by working with all of us. So that's what this whole national awareness effort is all about. And you challenged me with this goal. I didn't go to any meeting in my first three years as the CUNA president without somebody coming up to me and saying, Jim, you've got a chance. You're only going to get one. And that's to bring us all together, because it really has never been done before, to help us build an awareness effort that we can all be part of. So we went to work. First, we wanted to know what challenge are we trying to address? Well, here's, here's just a few that come to mind from the research that we did. The biggest banks today are gobbling up everything, even other banks. The biggest banks today own 32% of all of the assets across America, all right? Last year, 45% of every checking account that was opened, or 45% of all the checking accounts, were opened in one of those three institutions. And they only had 24% of the branches. So it's not just about who's walking into what brick and mortar operation. They're doing it online. They're doing it a lot of different ways. And the last year, in, in, we, we know that other institutions, because we heard about them, we heard about Amazon over in India, looking at how they can maybe get involved in financial services there. And how long will it be before we hear somebody say, hey, Alexa, open a checking account for me? Or, hey, Alexa, pay my bills. So we know it's coming, and we know we've got to get ready for this. But we also know that we're on top. Consumers look at credit unions, and we still are the very best when it comes to the consumer impressions. So why are they beating us? Well, one reason could be we're being outspent. Now, I recognize part of the reason they're spending so much money is because their reputation sucks. So it's rebuilding their reputation. I recognize that. And the other thing that they're doing is they're also trying to compete with each other, right? So between those two issues, of course, they're going to spend and need to spend a lot more money. But it's not just about that. Let me give you some perspective. The top five banks spend more than a billion dollars each, one billion with a B, in case the echo didn't pick that up, billion dollars each on marketing. All right, credit unions are basically being outspent by banks about 43 to one when it comes to dollars on marketing. And, and if you listen to the ads, I know you do. I know it probably, like me, it gets frustrating when you see a bank ad come on because what do they sound like? A credit union. They sound like us. They're stealing our message. And we've got to do something about that. So what we need to do is look at what are the myths that are kind of causing people to walk past our door? And we found two, two predominant myths that for some reason we're just not getting around. The first is, I can't join. I'm not eligible. I don't think I belong for some reason. Because maybe there's something in the sign, or I don't know what it might be, but I can't join is the first myth. The second is, even if I do join, if I jump on a plane and go to a conference in Boston, I might not be able to access my money back home. Because you're small, you're local, you're community, you're not Boston, right? And so I've got to be part of Wells or Bank of America if I'm going to be able to access my resources, all right? Well, I can tell you if those two myths continue, we will not grow and our future will be irrelevant. So we have got to do something about that. So CUNA invested $2 million in an effort to do some research. We asked a group of really intelligent, smart, experienced marketing folks led by Teresa Freeborn to come together to look at that marketing data and information and, and research and give us some ideas. And so we did the first research-based uh, approach that really has been done probably ever. We created a messaging guide. If you haven't downloaded it, uh, you can go to our booth and pick up a copy. You can download it on the internet and take a look at all of the research and what it told us about some of the words that we use and the messagings that we used. And it focused on those two myths. And maybe more important than anything, it said, please harness the collective cooperative superpowers of our industry in order to make this happen. So the first thing that came out of this is a, is a fantastic awareness initiative 
that has as its first campaign, Open Your Eyes. And this is an exciting new concept that we think is going to be a game changer. It makes clear that there is a credit union for everyone, and it makes clear that, that we can use the resources of a national effort to help all the boats rise and to help complement the efforts that you're doing either at your state level or regional level or at your credit union level. And so we wasted no time or no effort doing anything other than based on the research. And we came up with some pretty interesting things. And we're going to show that video here in a second. But I just before we do that, I want, to, I want to warn you. If you haven't seen this before, I want to warn you about something. Two things. One is, you're not the target audience. You already belong. This isn't supposed to appeal to you. So if you watch this and you go, oh, that wouldn't cause me to go into a credit union, OK, that's fine. But we tested it. And it was off the charts with those that weren't going into a credit union or had heard of one and maybe had not kind of given us a second look. That's the first thing. The second is marketing has changed. Marketing is not, do I see the ad during Oprah or do I see the ad during my nightly news? Marketing today, because that's marketing that used to be, it's kind of like I describe it as watering your lawn. You know, you used to go out with that sprinkler and you used to put it in the lawn and it would just spray water everywhere. That's the marketing of television. It actually was pretty good because it did get some of the water to the lawn. But today's marketing allows you to take an eyedropper and go down to the root of a blade of grass. That's you, by the way. And drop that message right at the right time to the right person in the right circumstance to get them to go, wow, a credit union? I ought to give that a, maybe a second chance. So let's look at the video that we put together on this effort. Hey, America. Yeah, you. Hello, you. Do you have treadmill money? You know, go to work, go home. Pay the bills, repeat tomorrow, and the next day? Yeah, you've got treadmill money. You work hard. Your money's working hard for someone else. You can break free. With a credit union, you're a person, not an account number. And as a credit union person, you own a piece of the pie. What does that mean? Checking accounts that give you a little extra. Savings, too. And loans you can do more with instead of being held back by. And with easy access to your money, coast to coast, 24 seven, you can dare to dream of getting a little more every day. So break free, open your eyes to a credit union. Join the millions of Americans already getting a little more. Open your eyes at yourmoneyfurther.com. So what's next? All right, here's what's next. Here's the vision, all right? We go live with that right after the first of the year. And I realize some of you are, okay, well, let's go tomorrow. I, I recognize that. Hold back. We gotta still do a few more tests and we're checking out markets. We're wanting to make sure that we're getting that eyedropper ready, not just blowing it around, all right? So that's the first thing. We go live after the first of the year. After all the election messaging too, that's the other challenge that's out there. So trust us, that's the best time based on what our experts tell us. So that's the first. Second, data, 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 research, 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 measure, measure, measure. We've got to make sure that we're putting the right investment in the right place and that we can demonstrate to you that there's a return on that investment. All right? So that's the second. Third, we want to make sure that everything we do complements what you're doing. So we don't want to interrupt anything. We don't, want to, we don't want to bigfoot anything, but we do want you to look at what we're doing and to see how you can help us with your messaging as well. We also want this to inspire new levels of creativity, right? As you can see in this, this, this connects. This is, I don't want to say it's easy because, you know, we, I mean, we did pay $2 million for it. Come on now, we don't want it to be too easy. But the point is, is that you can, if you can't see how you can connect to this already, go to the booth. Go to our booth in the center of the exhibit hall and see what people are doing taking pictures with Open Your Eyes to a Credit Union. That's the exciting thing, is you can take out your own phone, I guess, and you can send to your own marketing, right? You can do your own marketing with this through social media and connecting with people across the country. 
I want everyone to be able to, com uh, to contribute to this. No one should be left, everyone has a superpower here when it comes to being able to deliver this message. And whether you're a large credit union or you're a CEO or you're a marketing person or you're a teller or you're a credit union member, I want everyone to be able to deliver a message about opening America's eyes to the credit union. So, it's time to go big, all right? I think it's time. We've got to own our future. This is, we're not going to get another opportunity like this to me. So I have set a big goal. I believe we need to raise $100 million over the next three years deployed toward this effort. That's a big goal. And I realize there might be some who say, wow, that's a lot of money. There may be a few of you who say, well, that's not enough. We need more. Thank you for that. But let's start with that goal, OK? And let's see if we can grow it from there. So raise and deploy $100 million over the next three years toward this effort. And you're probably right, this has never been done before, right? Wrong. This is not, this has been done before. Think of what happened right here. Think of what 100 people did on a December night in 1773 down at the Boston Harbor. Dumped tea in the harbor and said, go to hell, Great Britain. I mean, think of the spark that just 100 people did. There isn't anybody who denies that that wasn't the spark that started the American Revolution. No one in that harbor that night was saying, you know what, I've got this idea. We're going to create a new democracy, and we're going to call it the United States of America. That's not what it was about. It was a spark that said, let's do something. Let's own our future. We want to be in charge. I think of Ed Feline, who is from Boston. I'm sure there were people who told him he was nuts. Why are you spending all of your own money to go out and create something called credit unions? Dora Maxwell, Louise Herring, people who, who jumped in a car or jumped on a train and started creating credit unions all over the country. They just did it. They did it because it was the right thing to do, because it helped people, and because they wanted to own their own future. That's what we have the opportunity to do today. And so, yeah, you know what? It has been done before. And we can decide to do it right now at the birthplace of America freedom. So here's the ask, $100 million over three years. It's got to be sustainable. I want it to be transparent, and I want it to be equitable. So the number, I think, is realistic because we want to move the needle. It's something that everybody can contribute to. It can be equitable because I think what we need to do is we need to talk to all credit unions and explain how that contribution connects to you in your credit union or in your particular area, how it affects your members, how, it aff how it's based on uh, a, an equitable distribution across the country. And it's got to be transparent. I want the information available to you so you can see how it's working and how it's connecting with the general public. So this is a, a movement-wide initiative. And we believe that as a result, we can move the needle for credit unions. So I'm asking you to commit. Everybody has the opportunity to participate in this. If you're a board member and you're visiting this conference, please put it on your agenda for the next meeting. Consider discussing this at your credit union. If you're a CEO, we're going to be, we're going to be in touch very soon. In fact, we're going to send you out a packet with all of the information, with this video, uh, with a PowerPoint presentation, so you can talk to your board about how to make this work. Uh, everyone in the audience has the opportunity to go to the booth and take a picture to open your eyes uh, to a credit union. And you can download that messaging guide today and be part of this. So let's control our own destiny. Let's control our own future. Let's decide and commit that we're going to change for the better by communicating almost like a choir, as I said at my very first speech at the GAC. How can we all work together, combining our voice and raising it on behalf of the credit union difference. I want to be able to answer the question that I get just about at every meeting. When someone will come up to me and they'll say, Jim, I'm worried about the future of credit unions. Will we be relevant five or 10 years from now? My answer to whether or not we're going to be relevant five, 10, 20, 100 years from now is hell yes, we are. Hell yes, we are. And I believe raising and deploying $100 million over the next three years and 
sustaining that effort for years to come is one of the ways that we can accomplish that. It's true that last year, five million new members walked through our doors. But you want to you wanna think about an idea that moves, wow, just think of what this could do so that we could serve even more members into the future and help make sure that their dreams come true. Thank you very much.